Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a review of the ABX index for FRM candidates. This is based on the subprime securitization case study, and the ABX index is the answer to the question, how are subprime loans valued? In January 2006, market launched the first ABX index. The index has been controversial. However, we can speak to at least one advantage. The subprime market is relatively illiquid, and prior to the index, there was no real transparent pricing mechanism. So at the very least, the ABX index introduced a means for the transparent pricing of subprime risk. So if we look at a graphical representation of the index, recall it's a credit derivative. It references 20 equally weighted residential mortgage-backed securities. There are five sub-indices. You can see here one, one of each is horizontal, triple A, double A, A, triple B, and triple B minus. So while we're here, let's just briefly acknowledge the criticisms of the ABX, and that is, first, it only constitutes with 20 names or references. Second, it's only five tranches. There are several other rating tranches, including this AAA is not the senior most tranche. And third, there are liquidity problems especially lately with the ABX. Given those problems, however, we can now see that each sub-index, so for example, the ABX.HE.A, constitutes reference obligations that all, or mortgage bonds, that all have the same rating. And the, index, the indices are reconstituted every six months. And so the entering into an ABX index contract is similar to entering into a basket credit default swap. That is to say there is a protection buyer and a protection seller. The protection buyer is going to be making regular monthly coupon payments. And these are like the insurance premiums that a credit default swap protection buyer would be making. Further, there's an, an initial premium or discount that reflects the current pricing of that risk. And we'll look at that in the next exhibit. In exchange for these premium payments, the protection buyer expects the protection seller to cover principal or interest shortfalls in the underlying mortgage bonds and also write downs on the underlying securities. However, there's a key difference between the ABX index contract and a regular basket credit default swap. A typical basket credit default swap would terminate when there's a trigger. However, in the case of the ABX index, the protection seller makes the payment or the payoff to cover the shortfall, but then, and then the notional is reduced, but the contract continues. So now if we look at the exhibit in the case study. I just wanted to explain what the authors have done here. And first note that the, the pricing here reflects July 24, 2007. So this is old prices. The prices I'm sure are lower across the board. And what we have are, sev are several vintages at the bottom here, 061 refers to the initial January 2006 launch. So you can see we have five sub indices, one for each rating for the January 2006 launch. Then I'll move up here to a more recent uh, vintage, the 072, let's say the credit, credit rating A, and there's a coupon rate. The coupon rate here is the coupon rate that's initially set when the index is launched. There's a dealer, there's a, a market dealer poll that's conducted and they set the initial coupon. This is what the protection buyer is going to be paying the protection seller. In this case, it's 369 basis points or about 3.7%. 
However, once it's launched, then there is market pricing takes over and the index price could move up or down. In this case, and across the board, the index price moves down. And what this means is that now a new protection buyer not only needs to pay the regular coupon of 369 basis points, but needs to pay an upfront premium. So the lower this price goes, well, let me show you the premium. It would be 100 minus the, the index price of 78.05, or about 22 basis points. So here, the price of 78 means that a protection buyer needs to pay an upfront premium of about 22 basis points in addition to the ongoing coupons. And so this way, the lower the price, the greater this premium. The price could go above 100, in which case there's a discount. But you can see how the index price therefore reflects the market-based sentiment toward the price of this risk. And as we saw in the case study, what happened in not long after the index launched is all of these index prices started to plummet. And the authors have done something else here, which is neat, and they've calculated the implied spread. So I finally just wanted to show you that because it builds on the duration concept that we study in bonds. And here I'll start, I'll just remind with our duration formula here, we say negative duration times a yield shock is approximately equal to the percentage change in the price of the bond. In other words, if we have a 1% change in the yield, multiply that by the duration, that approximately equals the percentage change in the price of our bond. Approximately because duration is only a first derivative linear approximation. So if we substitute in for the yield, the coupon plus the implied spread, we have the same relationship. Divide both sides by duration. Subtract the coupon. We end up here with the formula that the authors used to calculate the implied spread. And again, what they're doing is given the change in the index price, they want to figure out what does that imply on the spread. So that's here, and it's going to be a function here of the percentage change in price of the bond or the uh, contract divided by the duration, add the coupon. The negative because these move in the opposite directions. Is the As the price goes up, that's a narrowing of the spread. As the price goes down, that's a widening of the spread. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that a mathematical background, and we can replicate this here for our uh, for our uh, sub-index here, our 7.2 with the rating of A. And we have an index price of 78.05. The estimated duration on that tranche is about 3.5. And so we'll take 100 minus the index price. That's the price change. We need to multiply that by 100 because these are basis points and that's just a unit conversion. Then we divide that by the estimated duration and then we add that ongoing coupon rate and we get the implied spread here of just about 1,000 basis points, which is fully 10%. So I hope that's a helpful illustration of the calculation of the implied spread and the use of these index prices on the ABX index contract. This is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.